Artificial humanness has always fascinated us real humans. But for centuries, even our cleverest human-like creations weren't very convincing. After all, what they lacked was brains. Are people becoming obsolete? In the 1940s, what the new electronic computers did seemed enough like the workings of human brains to excite the imagination. Maybe these machines could think. Today, intelligent machines are all around us. They're doing things that mimic human senses and brain power, doing them well. They tutor us in a host of subjects. They translate to and from dozens of languages. We now have true automobiles and robots. Some with exquisite mechanical skills, some rather like us, some with limited but very practical brain power to direct them. In 1950, intelligent machines were still a dream, a vision of what might be. One of the visionaries was a brilliant British mathematician who argued that electronic computers could, and someday would, achieve intelligence. He proposed a scenario to recognize it. The Turing test says that if a human being communicating with a hidden human and a hidden machine can't tell which is which, we can conclude that the machine is intelligent. In 1955, Three men began a collaboration to create a machine capable of logical thought. Governed by the principles of symbolic logic, their program, called the Logic Theorist, recreated proofs at the foundations of mathematics, and even created one proof better than the mathematician's version. Astonishing! In the summer of 1956, mathematics professor John McCarthy hosted a conference at Dartmouth College. His invitation expressed a remarkably strong opinion of what the field might aspire to. The attendees argued energetically about everything, but they agreed on the name of the exciting new field they would define and lead. Artificial Intelligence, AI. The AI pioneers believed computers would quickly achieve most of the characteristics of human intelligence. In response to this optimism and the spur of Cold War competition, the government poured millions into undirected basic AI research at multiple research centers. New computer languages were designed specifically to optimize AI's logic programming. A toolkit of AI algorithms and techniques began to grow. Computers were given senses and taught about the real world. For some 15 years, AI research enjoyed a golden age. Success seemed inevitable. Non-biological machines would have minds of their own. The possibilities seemed tantalizing, and in a thought-provoking movie, even chilling. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. By the 1970s, scientists were building robots that worked independently. Shaky could process the meaning of English instructions, look around, and figure out a plan all by itself. Or was it herself? Machines learned to play games, 
IBM used checkers in demonstrating its first commercial computer in the early 50s. The supreme test was chess. That was hard. Computers suffered years of trouncing by human players. But when IBM's Deep Blue finally achieved victory over the world's reigning grandmaster, it was 40 years after the optimism of Dartmouth. And no one considered Deep Blue's triumph to mean that computers had become intelligent in general. In the 1980s, AI research shifted to a more modest and pragmatic effort with systems that could perform narrowly defined tasks with great expertise. The pioneer expert system, Dendral, was taught basic chemistry and the mental rules experts used to interpret mass spectrometer data. The result? The computers became experts too, and knowledge-oriented AI computing was on its way. Since the 1980s, one team has been trying to teach computers everything people learn about the world, piece by piece, with the ambiguities sorted out. Success remains uncertain and distant, but the work goes on. By the mid-1990s, AI researchers faced the fact that the expert knowledge approach had its limits too. Programming for intelligence refocused again, inventing ways to deal with probabilities in the messy, uncertain real world, and teaching computers to get much better at learning from their experiences. Today, logic, knowledge, and learning are deeply embedded in machines. That doesn't mean computers are behaving or thinking like humans. We actually don't need to have a computer reason the way that we would reason through a decision tree, right? You know, it used to be that our AI was all about decision trees. Now you can just actually, pro you know, you can program it using brute force. It's really, uh, and because when you have brute force computation and a lot of data, you can make things appear intelligent. Yet most AI scientists still believe that Alan Turing's predictions of general artificial intelligence will be achieved someday. A computer will be better at some tasks and perhaps not as good at others, but that doesn't make it unintelligent. It just makes it not human, but that's okay. We relate intelligence to the ability to do certain things independently of whether what does it is a human or a Martian or a mechanism. And whether or not they get smarter by AI researchers or whether by computer scientists continuing to do what they do, it doesn't really matter too much, but eventually they will in fact achieve human level intelligence. We're not likely to stop trying to teach computers the great tricks of the human mind. We've been working at it seriously for less than a human lifetime. The thing we call AI, computers doing intelligent things is the manifest destiny of computer science.